So here we are going to continue some of the knowledge that we need to know from the previous lesson. So in the previous lesson, the main takeaway was being able to take degrees and turn them into radians. Now the reason we do that is because as we move on to taking a look at sine and cosine in a more uh, in a deeper light, we need to take a look at their graphs. So whenever we graph sine or cosine, then rather than thinking of it as going from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, as we might normally look at a graph, we actually look at it in terms of radians. So in terms of pi and different increments of pi or pi divided by 2, etc. So typically at the very end of our graph or one increment of sine or one increment of cosine typically goes up to 2 pi and we should remember 2 pi as the total circumference of our unit circle. So right in the middle between 2 pi and 0 would be pi and then splitting these up into smaller increments as well we also get 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now, where do we actually get the graph from? That is, of course, our unit circle. So if we take a look at our unit circle, where we would have a graph cutting through the center, we start at our zero value. At this value right here, where we would have the degree or the radian of zero. As we continue going forward from one to 90 degrees or from one to pi over two degrees, uh, radians, we start to increment upwards our values. So pi over 2 is our first mark. So let's take a look at what happens with sine as we start. So at the very, very beginning, sine is 0. Because to remember, sine is our y value. So right here, sine is set as 0. As we go up, our sine value also increments up with our y eventually matching up to get to 1. So we see that happen, that at pi over 2, we get to 1. And this is a bit, this is a sloped path, because you could see that at the very beginning, y jumps up very, very quickly, starts to kind of lag a little bit as it gets closer and closer. So we're going to mimic that as we kind of show it up, that it jumps up very quickly, but at our one value here, it starts to kind of lag over a bit and slope downwards. So now at pi over two, we are set at one. Now we continue this pattern going forward. And again, always remember that any line going outwards is our radius. And so that would be our theta, our degree, or we can turn it into a radian. So as we go forward, our y value, which is sine, goes up as well. So now starting from pi over 2, we head over to the halfway point. At the, this here, our radian is set as pi. And so we have that increment here. So we follow along our y value starting at 1. We start our y value at 1. So as we follow along this curve going downwards, our y value starts slowly going downwards until it takes a quick drop. So it starts going down until it reaches 0. So at y equals 0. That's our sine value. So we want to mimic that, that right up at the top just as it starts its journey it's going to slowly fall until it until it just drops of course always remember that my drawings aren't necessarily 
exactly to scale, but the path more or less how it follows is correct. So now here we have our sine value of zero. Well, what happens afterwards? This is when we hit into our negative of our unit circle, remembering that over here we have the positive x going forward, here we have the positive y going up, over here we have our negative x, and over here we have our negative y. So as our values turn negative, then our y value becomes negative, obviously. So as we continue going this way, our negative values for y start incrementing upwards higher and higher, and the way we show that, so starting at our zero mark, we have that large jolt upwards, and then a slow progression until we reach our other one, our negative one value here. Then at that point, we could mark this into our graph, showing that there is a quick jolt, and then it slowly starts to taper out. And here is where our one, negative one value is. We finish off our unit circle by meeting back at the origin point where we started, and as we do that, we could see that our y value starting at negative one starts to increment downwards from negative one to uh, negative 0.75, negative, uh, negative half, negative one quarter, etc., etc., until it slowly eventually gets back to zero. And so we show that by the slower slope into the quick progression of the slower slope into the quick progression. So this is what our sine graph, otherwise known as a sine wave, ends up looking like because of the values we get from our unit circle. And so just from these given values, we could take some assumptions as well as educated guesses as to where certain values will end up. So given that any of, uh, so before we get into what some of those values can be, it is important to note that with these waves, there are peaks and frequency. Now that's going to come into more of a importance as we get past tangent as well, because we're going to start altering these functions, making them more frequent, or change where they actually end up on our graph. But for now, just to note that peaks are set at the highest value. These are also the maximum that they can be. Right here would be a minimum. And if we were to continue our pattern going forward, we would end up somewhere along here having another peak. So the distance between two peaks is our frequency. And that's basically just how many times this wave happens. So this these definitions also stay for cosine, but in this case we could take a look at our sine wave and kind of see what values go where. So if we follow along, our first section of the sine wave got cut off at pi over 2. So that was going from 0 to 90 degrees or 0 to pi over 2 radians. So that is where we get our peak of pi over 2. If any radian degree is between 0 and pi over 2, that will just be positive and increasing. So positive, increasing. As we go from pi over 2 to pi, we could very easily see that this is also positive, but it is decreasing. 
and this would be our 90 to 180 and then we could see our pattern start to go that after we decrease we get a zero value we cut off at 3 pi over 2 where we are negative and decreasing still until we go negative increasing and so on and so forth as we continue our pattern always having a pattern of increase to increase and positive 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 negative negative positive positive negative negative increase 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 decrease decrease increase increase and so on and so forth so just to remember that especially with a unit circle your maximum value is one your minimum value is negative one and these graphs will go at a increment of pi over two so just so that can be kind of seen we start at pi over two we add another pi over two and that would give us the value two pi over two which we could just cancel out to be pi and then two pi over two plus pi over 2 gives us the 3 pi over 2 and then 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 gives us 4 pi over 2 which if we cancel out gives us that 2. So a bit of information being put in there we're going to now move on to the cosine which will you will see that becomes very very similar to what we're looking at just with a different starting value as well as a slightly different pattern going forward. So now we're switching gears into cosine to get the cosine wave. For reference, I put up the uh, smaller version of the sine graph over on the right just to see kind of the similarities as well as differences we'll see between sine and cosine. So as we decide to move up our cosine wave, we again start at our starting value here, this zero radian, zero degree section. So as we start there, we then begin to move forward again, going to our first increment, which is pi over two. Now, unlike sine, when we start at zero here, our cosine is at its largest point because our cosine is set for the x value. So from the center point all the way to the edge is our maximum value starting at one. So our starting value start is at one. As we begin to go forward into pi over two, going from one, we begin to decrease our x value slowly and slowly where starting at one eventually it becomes a smaller distance and smaller as we eventually get to zero. So we want to show that in the graph showing that there is a smaller progression at first into a quicker progression. So we're going to have a little bit of a curve into a drop. Now we are at zero. We are at zero here. We go to our next increment being pi, where we continue along the curve of our circle. Now in this case, since we're just starting at zero, we end up incrementing upwards for our negatives. So in this case, the negative fractions as we continue going forward, so like negative 0.25, negative 5, etc., etc., going upwards to the maximum value we can get to, which is 1, uh, negative 1. So we want to show that, that we have our maximum negative 1, and as we're going upwards, we hit that negative 0.5, we hit that negative uh, 0.25, etc, etc, all of the small decimals fractions in between 0 and negative 1. So the progression that it goes through is a fast progression at first into a slower curve as it gets nearer to our
negative one value. So we so show that here, and at this point we are doing uh, we're following along the same progression we did with sine, except just making sure we follow for the x values rather than the y. So we go to the next increment, which would be three pi over two. We could see that we are undoing the work that we just did and going from our negative one down to zero. So we follow along that same curve going from negative one down to zero. And to finish off, we go from a zero back upwards to our positive one value. And we show that by going upwards as such. And you might notice that, well, these curves look pretty similar. Now in this case, just between 0 and 2, point, 2 pi, we could actually see both peaks that form a frequency. For sine, we had to extend that graph further in order to f see the two peaks for the frequency. So the only real difference between a sine and cosine wave is that a cosine wave is just a sine wave shifted over slightly. If uh, I clear this left side real quick, if I took this cosine wave and I just took all of these numbers and just move them over by pi over 2. So here we had 2 pi. I'm moving 2 pi here now. So this is 2 pi now. This would become 3 pi over 2. This value would become pi. And then I would extend this out so that rather than having our zero point here, we would have pi over 2. And this would now be our zero. We could see that we created a sine wave from our cosine because it starts at zero and continues along the pattern, except we have a small extension. So sine and cosine is very, very similar. It's just important to recognize the uh, small difference between them. The small difference being that a sine wave starts at zero and a cosine wave starts at a y value of one. Hopefully this is kind of coming together. Uh, all that I'm really asking of the homework that I have set is just kind of take these radians and follow along the graph to see where exactly would the radian or degree be plotted on here as we continue forward. Hopefully the uh, animated GIFs are helpful in kind of understanding where the triangles on the unit circle come into play for sine and cosine. And tomorrow we're going to be looking at tangent because it's a little bit different in terms of how the graph actually gets set as well as what tangent actually is. Hopefully you are enjoying your day, stay safe and healthy.